Hey kiddos, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about an electrolyte. An electrolyte is a substance that when dissolved in water will conduct electricity. To determine that, I have a light bulb here which is connected to a wall outlet. Um, if these two electrodes here were touching each other right now, the light bulb would glow. You'd see it light, but right now they're separated from each other by an inch or so. Um, when I place different substances um, underneath those electrodes and immerse the electrodes in that substance, the light bulb may or may not light. If the light bulb lights, it means that whatever I've immersed those electrodes in is an electrolyte. It can conduct electricity. If it doesn't light, it's a non-electrolyte. So let's start with solid sodium chloride. I have this handsome lump of sodium chloride that I picked up from the Great Salt Lake Flats. And I'm just going to try to touch these. Oh, you know what? With the plastic covering these electrodes, electrodes, I can't quite touch them with that salt. So I'm going to have to use some granulated salt. And when I place those granules and immerse them in the electrodes, you will notice that the light bulb does not light. See, sodium chloride is an ionic compound, but the ions are not mobile. They are in a fixed position, so they can't move from one electrode to the other. So, solid sodium chloride, kiddos, is a non-electrolyte. Now, you might notice some residue is left on those electrodes, so I have beakers of distilled water that I'll be using to rinse these electrodes off between every test because we don't want those to interfere with our next substance. So, I'm rinsing that off with distilled water. Let me do it again with another clean beaker of distilled water. All right, there we go. Now let's try sodium chloride dissolved in water. Sodium chloride AQ, that means water molecules are surrounding the sodium and the chloride ions. And when I place that solution, uh, or when I immerse the electrodes in that solution, you can see the light bulb go, glows quite brightly, so we would say sodium chloride dissolved in water is an excellent electrolyte. Okay, let's rinse those electrodes off again so they do not interfere with our next test. And this time I have some alcohol, uh, actually, yes, some ethanol. Now, ethanol is a molecular compound. There are no ions in pure alcohol. So when I take this mixture or this alcohol and I place it uh, so the electrodes are immersed in it, you'll see the light bulb does not light. So we would say alcohol is a non-electrolyte. What about alcohol with sugar or salt in it? What if I take some alcohol and I put some salt in it? So NaCl in alcohol. Now you can't see it very well, but I'm looking at the bottom of this and I can see the crystals of salt did not dissolve. So when I place the electrodes or when I immerse the electrodes in the sodium chloride placed in alcohol, since the sodium chloride is not dissolved, I do not have any mobile ions. It is a non-electrolyte. Okay, let's rinse that off again. And let's move on to sugar. Now, sugar dissolves in water quite, quite nicely. So, will sugar dissolving in water cause uh, this solution to be an electrolyte? Let's find out. Hmm, nothing happens again. You see, sugar is not ionic. When it dissolves in water, it does not make any mobile ions. So, since there are no ions present that can conduct the current, sugar is not an electrolyte, it's a non-electrolyte. Let's rinse the sugar off with a clean beaker. All right, and let's move to copper sulfate dissolved in water. Now, copper sulfate's ionic, copper two plus and SO4 sulfate two negative ions, and you can see the copper sulfate solution is a very good electrolyte, isn't it? The light bulb glows quite nicely. Hmm. Mobile ions are present again. So in order to be an electrolyte, the ions need to be able to flow from one electrode to another. 
Well, I've been rinsing this with distilled water, so you already know the answer for the next one, but let's try distilled water for the next part of our demonstration. This is pure distilled water, and we'll test that, and to no one's surprise, there are no ions, uh, mobile ions present in distilled water, at least not enough to cause the filament of the light bulb to glow. So we would call, for all intents and purposes, distilled water a non-electrolyte. But what about tap water? What about water I get from the tap? Aren't there some things dissolved in water as it makes its way down through our rivers and streams and lakes? In fact, you've heard of hard water before, calcium and magnesium carbonates. They dissolve a tiny bit in water. So maybe we'll see a little bit of an electro, uh, electrolyte in, ooh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but that filament is glowing very, very dimly. Let's try that again. Yeah, when I put the tap water in there, we get a little bit. So tap water is a very, very poor electrolyte because of the ions that are dissolved in there. There aren't very many. It's not a very good electrolyte at all. It's not, aren't very many, but there are some mobile ions in tap water. And if you look carefully, you can see the filament glow. All right, so in order to be an electrolyte, you must have mobile ions. The mobile ions need to be soluble in water, so the water, water molecules surround those ions, and then they can flow between the electrodes. If there are no mobile ions, if it's a molecular compound, non-metal to non-metal, it's a non-electrolyte, kiddos. All right, hope this helped. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.